to install ZAttack Proxy or Zap on Windows, we're going to start by grabbing the installation package. So on the Zap website, we'll use the Download Now button. And then we're going to grab the Windows installer. For most computers, this will be 64-bit. And then we'll save the file. Once the download starts, you should see it up in the downloads area. And we'll wait until the download is complete. Once the download is finished, you can either double click on it in your downloads directory, or you can just click on it in the browser. We'll run the application, and the installer will start installing. If we don't have Java already pre-installed, we're going to be warned that we need to go and download Java. And the version of Java needs to match the version of that. So in this case, we're downloading 64-bit for Windows. So we'll need a 64-bit Java Runtime Environment, or JRE. While the installation package is running, we'll go ahead and download Java. We're going to get Java 64-bit. So on the main Java page, we'll click on Java Download. And then we'll go ahead and start the download. Now we'll see Java is downloading. And again, this part will only happen if you haven't already installed Java 64-bit on your Windows computer. So since we need Java on this computer, we'll go ahead and install Java. And again, that's just the runtime environment. We don't need the entire Java development kits or JDK. We only need the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE. So we're going to be completing the Java installation. And depending on the speed of your computer, this part can take several minutes. Once the Java installation is done, go ahead and close the window. And we're back to the installer. So at this point, you can either tell Zap where Java is located, or you can simply hit the cancel button and restart the installation for Zap. If you didn't need Java installed on your computer, then you would have seen the installation progress to where we are now. Go ahead and give the installer permission to install Zap. And the dialog opens, and we can go ahead and click Next, accept the license agreement, click Next again, and we're just going to do the standard installation. If you wanted to install in a custom directory, you can click on custom installation and choose those options. At this point, the installer will begin to copy the files into the default directory. Once it's complete, we click finish on the wizard and Zap is now installed. To run Zap, we can use the shortcut is created on the desktop. You can also find a shortcut under Windows. We'll just use the one on the desktop and we double click. This will start Zap running and it'll open up the interface.
you should see it loading with the progress bar going across and the messages down below. Once the jar files are all loaded up, the main dashboard will open. And we're going to need to give it permission through the Windows firewall. And typically, you would only need to have private networks checked unless you plan on doing some type of assessment on a public network, but that's rarely needed. So we're going to click on Allow Access. And now we're presented with the normal startup menu. So once you pick which setting you want for the session, you can hit the Start button and you'll be at the dashboard. And now you're ready to start using Zap.